Hello, and welcome everybody to another episode of Pod Strickland. I'm your host, Shwini Poo, and this episode 398. That's right, we're we're creeping up on the, on the I don't know, is that on a quadruple century mark? There we go. All right, but I'm joined by, uh, not a first-time guest, but first time in a long time, his name is Jack Borman. That is at jrborman13 on Twitter. He is the editor-in-chief, still, but not for too much longer, of Canisupus, Jack how are you doing? How are you enjoying? You might, you might get, you might get quite the send off, man. You might get quite the send off. I, I might, you know, I, <laughs> I, it's, it's a little weird when people are like, Hey man, like when are you, when are you stepping down? I'm like, Hey, whenever the Timberwolves decide to stop winning it's or, or just run out of games to win is when I'll be done. But um, yeah, still trying to, still trying to, you know, find a way to tell yourself that this run is real just because it's something that, that we've never experienced obviously, or, or for you know older fans, not, not in a long time. So uh, it's been, it's been a ton of fun and uh, you know, just enjoying every single night of it while, while you still have it for sure. Well, you've literally been able to enjoy every single night because the wolves as of yet are still, still undefeated in the playoffs. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, the Knicks and how the NBA is conspiring to get them to the Eastern conference finals. Um, Thank you. Shout out to my boy, Scott Foster. Shout out to my boy, Josh Tivin. Scott Foster yeah. did it for both of us. Uh, yeah. The extender the extender, f- put his legacy on the line in Phoenix, I, and the yeah. Wolves were too strong. Put his legacy on the line for you guys. <laughs> um, you know, look at us. A couple of big market big market <laughs> guys just cutting it up here. Big I mean, market New, Minneapolis. Yeah, New York and Minneapolis. They're basically the same fucking market. Who needs you know? Phoenix, Dallas, <laughs> L.A.? You know, when you've got, when you've got Minneapolis they even to, here. to hold it down in I Dallas in the here. West. D.C., get out of here. We don't care about the nation's capital. Only on January 6th. Uh, all right. Before we get started, I do have, do have to make a few announcements. The first thing is Strickland has an Instagram. Check that out. That is at the Strickland on Instagram. We're posting all the time. So we content on there. The Strickland also has a YouTube channel where, where you may be watching this broadcast. Podcast. Wow, broadcast. Podcast. Uh, if you are and you've not done so already, please hit like, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment. That'd be a huge help to us. The Strickland also has merchandise, which you can find on our website at www.thestrick.land. There's a link that'll take you to the merchandise store, and you can find all kinds of cool stuff on there. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, coffee mugs, water bottles, you name it, we've got it. We've got a whole new line, the Nova York line. Check that out. That is actually very, very cool uh, and very time uh, appropriate right now. The Strickland also has a Patreon which you can subscribe to. There are a number of different tiers. There's a six dollar tier that gets you access to Pot Strickland's podcast that I host every Friday with Prez, except when he's being a lazy asshole and not being here. You also get access he keeps to stuck in me, man. We gotta yeah, figure that out. He's scared. He's scared of the wolf smoke for some reason. Uh, you also get access to Takes from Rapids Bozos, our newest podcast that is hosted by Andrew Steele, aka Doug, along with Zach Blatter. And you get access to Strickland Discord, where the conversation never stops. There are further tiers. There's a nine dollar tier that gets you access to Strickland and all my solo pod. I ran around with the same You also get access to one of premium articles goes by Matthew Marino, one of the best in the business. And now you get access to Strictly NFL, our podcast, which you guessed it is about the NFL. That is hosted by Constantine Metricos. There are further tiers. There's a fifteen dollar tier, thirty dollar tier, fifty dollar tier, and a hundred dollar tier. There's come with a variety of additional benefits. It goes in a pod recordings, merchandise discounts, and potentially hosting a podcast alongside yours truly one day, whether you choose to subscribe or not. Knows it's possible without you. And then this would be possible to bet online. Bet online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoff stats. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and ad odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today. Use mobile device to get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. Um, all right, let's. Uh, I don't know. What, what you can do. Let's let's start with the Knicks. Let's start with the Knicks. It's a Knicks podcast. I'm on my home turf. I need to defend it. You know, uh, this is not. This is not we're not this is not called the uh the Brandon Terrell land. You know, this is this is not the uh Anthony Tolliver land. This is the Strickland. This is not um, the Michael Olawa Candy land. <laughs> <laughs> Just naming obscure Timberwolves players. Uh the Knicks, obviously they win last night, uh game two, go two oh in their series against the Indiana Pacers. Uh Apparently, the entire conversation that is being had, I watched I, I watched Get Up today for the first time in years. Uh, I threw that on. And uh, there was a long discussion about, did Rick Carlisle have a, a gripe to be made about the officiating? And I just got to say, if like you're analyzing this game, and you're if, if you're purporting to, you know, provide analysis of this game, of basketball in general, sports, whatever, if your initial conversation about this game 
is about Rick Carlisle's gripes and whether they're fair or not about about the officiating after this, you hate fucking sports because what you watched last night will is like it is literally it was like it was a fucking movie. That was a fucking movie. The Knicks go up, they're up 24-13. This looked like they it looked like they had, you know, game one was what it was. It was wild and it's crazy. And that's always the most random game of a playoff series. But it looked like they had learned their lessons, you know, and they had, you know, they started off the game, their defense was dominant. They were cutting up the pacers left and right. It looked like they might run away with it. And then Brunson gets hurt. And all of a sudden, the, the Pacers lay, go on an 11-0 run in 49 seconds, which was insane, tie the game up, and Brunson's out for the rest of the half. The Knicks' defense is a total disaster. They give up 73 points in the first half to the, the Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton, uh, magically his hamstring felt much better in the first half suddenly, <laughs> uh, and he looked like the Tyrese Halliburton of old uh, before the hamstring injury, but also maybe after the hamstring injury sometimes, but not all the time. Who knows what's going on there? Um He's cutting up the Knicks. They can't get a stop. They can't stop a nosebleed. They can't get a fucking defensive rebound half the time. It is a mess, and the season looks like it's going to be over. And then Jalen Brunson walks out at halftime, starts shooting around. The crowd is going nuts to start this game in the third quarter. I mean, as crazy as the MSG crowds have been throughout this playoff run, I mean, th that yesterday was unbelievable. That was as loud as I've ever heard the Garden. Um, and... It's on the anniversary of Willis fucking Reed coming out of the tunnel in game seven. You've got this whole thing going on. They come out in the third quarter and they bullied the Pacers, absolutely bullied them. Uh, it looked like the Pacers, it, it didn't look, the Pacers were 100% shook. They were terrified. They were mortified. Tyus Halliburton had zero interest in taking a shot in that third quarter while the crowd was roaring and the Knicks go up. They are, I mean, they look like they're about to pull away. They look like they're about to pull away. 88-81, fast break. Brunson throws it ahead to OG at an OB. And OG dies on this fast break. Literally pulls up. Looks like, I don't know. I mean, we don't we don't have any confirmation yet. It looks like he did something to his hamstring. There's some people there. There are people that are saying, like, maybe it's just a cramp. I think you're being very optimistic you think it's a cramp. Hopefully I'm wrong. Um, I was cramping time. watching him and Josh Hart play <laughs> as much as they played, and I was just sitting on my couch. But Josh Hart know, doesn't do he doesn't do cramps. We're we're all athletes here. <laughs> so he, he like throws up this bullshit off the glass. Knicks get their offensive rebound, they actually put it back. But like he's basically just stumbling around on the court after this. Like, so they got to get him off the get him out of there. Uh and and now you're like, well, fuck. Like now we're oh, so now we have six guys again. At least we have Brunson back, but now we lost OG. But they close out this game in the fourth quarter. It gets pretty tight. By the way, the Pacers uh, did get back into the game, not on the strength of their starters, who have been fucking awful in the series, but on the strength of their bench and one TJ McConnell and one former Nick, Obi Toppin, who have both been really good in this series. Um, they lead the Sixers back. It's actually one – or sorry, the Sixers. The Wolves back. Or sorry, Jesus Christ. The Pacers <laughs> back. It's a 102-101 game, and – they call timeout. Josh Hart hits a three. They kind of stabilize things. And then Rick Carlisle, who is sitting here crying about the officiating, crying about the whistle after the game, pulls TJ McConnell out of the game. And everybody, and I mean everybody, the fucking broadcast, Knicks fans, Pacers fans, your mom, my mom, everybody's mom was aware that was a mistake. TJ McConnell was like the reason that the, Pac or the Pacers were in this game, that they had made it a game again. Even on the broadcast, Stan Van Gundy and, and Reggie Miller throughout the end of the game were begging this man to put T.J. McConnell back in, and he didn't do it. The Knicks pull away. Uh, they, I mean, it ends up being a 130 to 121 score, but it... it the, for that, for the end, of, and look, Brunson is fantastic in the second half. He's basically playing on one foot. I think he had 24 in the second half. Um, it, the energy of the crowd, you know, Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo in the second half, they look like they got shot out of a fucking rocket. Hartenstein, I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable game from him. He, he's probably the one guy in the first half even that's still kind of him and OG, like those two guys really kind of kept them in the game in the first half while Brunson was out. But in the second half, he was great. OG, I mean, he goes out hurt, but he had 28 points in 28 minutes. It's a pretty incredible game. Precious comes up with some big plays on the stretch, some big rebounds. But, like, 
if your takeaway from all of that, well, however long I just spoke, maybe like a fucking eight minute monologue there. If your takeaway from this game is, you know how we should start our coverage of this? Let's talk about Rick Carlisle, who did about 14 fucking stupid things in this game. Let's talk about whether he's right or not about the officiating. And I am old enough to remember when those same people were praising Rick Carlisle, who after game one said that the game is about so much more than just a call at the last, (laughs) at the end of the game. It's about what you do the last five, six, seven, eight minutes of the game. Did Rick Carlisle say, Hey, I'm still looking for Pascal Siakam because I I didn't see, I didn't see him in the second half. You know, I'm not going to say that Pascal Siakam, what shot two of 10 had four points in the second half. You know, I'm not going to say that I forgot about TJ McConnell because he's the only guy that that Knicks fans are probably scared of. I'm not going to say that, oh, you know, I probably should have had someone other than Andrew Nemhart guard Jalen Brunson, right? Did, did he say any of those things? Reference <laughs> no, any of those not. things? No, he did not. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was that we gave up 31 points in, in the fourth quarter? No? Not, not going to mention that either? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Gave up five offensive rebounds in the fourth quarter? No? No? It's okay. It's it like it's it's just bananas to me, and I, to me, it's almost like uh, just like remember when is the lowest form of conversation. Talking about officiating after these epic playoff games, and I'm not just talking about this this game. Like throughout these playoffs, have been some really really good games, and yeah, there have been some really questionable calls made in them too. You know what the reality is? Like you're gonna have questionable calls, and the Knicks had a fucking questionable call go against them at the end of game five against the Sixers. And do you want to know what happened? I don't remember a single Knicks fan talking about, man, what a horrible mistravel call on Tyrese Maxey. I was like, maybe make some fucking free throws, assholes. Maybe Mitchell Robinson, don't jump in the air and even give him the opportunity to draw a foul. What, like, don't do stupid shit. Like, you know, as the saying goes, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Like, you can't control the refs. You can control what you can't control. And... Unless you played a perfect game, like, I don't know, man. Like, you're in the playoffs. I I just find it kind of, like, ridiculous to focus so much on officiating in these games with, you know, these are the best teams in the NBA, allegedly. Like, these are supposed to be the best teams in the NBA. There's a lot more to talk about than officiating and what's a foul and what's not a foul. And, you know, like, yeah, if you really want me to, I could go and make a super cut of plays that I think the Knicks are getting fouled on. They're not getting calls. But why would I do that? Like, it's just a waste of time. And honestly, it's just kind of like, like you just have to deal with this stuff and you've got to find a way to fight through it. And like, you know, I mean, we watched, I mean, you watched it. I watched it. The game four, like you guys played against the Suns. I mean, Devin Booker, what did he shoot? 25 free throws in that game or something? He was, he, he couldn't score otherwise. So he was yeah. just trying to draw fouls. I mean, yeah. it was great. He was doing a good job of it, but. But like, like, and it's like, was that actually like, I mean, if you want that to be the game, that could be the game too, but like I can't really figure out what people want because it's like, oh well, you know, you got to call these fouls, but also Jalen Brunson is a foul baiter, so don't call those fouls, but call these ones because it's like do you just want don't them? call the ones where he jumps backwards. I love Jalen yeah. Brunson with all my heart, but don't don't be Trey Young. Come on. Um, but all I will say is that shout out to Mark Davis, man. Got off a plane from Denver where he got a heat pack thrown at him. He had a towel thrown at him. He had. Michael Malone spit all over his face. Uh, and then what does he do? He gets Rick Carlisle's saliva all over his face uh, at, at MSG. Um, really tough 48 hours for, for that guy, by the way. Uh, all self-inflicted, but still. Yeah, he he just he definitely had a, a, a nice, nice couple of days there. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I come away from this game and I'm like, you could talk about so many things. You could talk about the Knicks fighting through another set of injuries that they deal with in game. I mean, kind of an insane sequence of injuries. If you really think about it, uh, you could talk about Josh Hart is what is he 19, 15 and seven yesterday. Like Devin has 28 points. Brunson, obviously coming back in the second half. Like you, you have so many things to talk about. I mean, shit, you can, if you want to talk about actual basketball, why don't you talk like you want to know why the six, why the Pacers lost this game, the Pacers lost this game because they couldn't defend Brunson one-on-one. And then when they trapped him, they kept helping off of Dante DiVincenzo. Like, so, like, you, you could talk about that. You could talk about how, maybe, oh, how, how are the Knicks getting these guys open? These are things you could talk about. You could talk about, hey, well, how is it that Tyrese Halliburton 
looked like a monster in the first half, looked like, all right, he's back. And then the second half, he comes out, doesn't want to shoot the ball. What, what Were there adjustments made? Probably. I don't know. I would like to think that there's some actual coaching and X's and O's strategy going on here. There were some adjustments made. But, like, you could talk about so many different things. Like, hey, you know what I would love to know? I would. Lo- I don't even know if he was asked about this yesterday. Hey, Rick, did you have had any thought of bringing T.J. McConnell back in the game? Because he's going really good. What do you have? He had, I think he had 10 and 12 in 22 minutes yesterday. Like, he was fucking dominating the game. He's dominated both games that he's played in the minutes he's played. And it's like, like none of these questions are being asked of him. None of these questions are being discussed generally. It's, it's just, hey, well, you know, he does have a point. Game one was pretty bad. Game two, I don't know about that. It's like, okay, so we've determined that uh, they got a good whistle in game. They got a bad whistle in game one. They got a, uh, <laughs> thank you for the message. Uh, and a, uh, a, 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 they got a fine. I mean, the whistle was fine in game two, but like, I just, to me, it's look. Well, I I will say this. Do you know why teams like having home court in the playoffs? Is it is it possible? Is it because that yes, teams often play better at home, but is it also because teams often get a better whistle at home, and your home crowd can influence officiating potentially? Do we think that some of these favorable calls the Knicks have had? down the stretch of these games with the crowd going absolutely fucking crazy. Does that have anything to do with the crowd being absolutely fucking crazy and influencing officiating? Possibly, potentially we can't never know for sure, but this is why you want home court. This is why like the Celtics, you know, they've obviously got home court throughout the fucking playoffs. Teams want home court for a reason. I mean, you guys were playing, you guys played, I mean, I know they lost game 82, but obviously the Wolves were trying to win that last game of the season. They weren't trying to like, they wanted to win that last game of the season. Why? Because they wanted home court. Like there's an advantage to this stuff, and this is part of that benefit. Like, yeah, you want if you're if you're not going to get me to deny, yeah, I think the Knicks are probably getting uh, an edge on officiating calls in in their games in MSG. I don't think there's a doubt about it. Guess what? That's why you want to play your fucking games at home. You want to play as many games as you can at home. Uh, not a real, not a big conspiracy theory. Not a huge like. I think that's a pretty basic tenet of how things work. 